All right, hello, welcome to today's lesson. We're doing 5.4, which we're talking about multiples, and more specifically, we're talking about least common multiples. So we need to quickly review what is a multiple. Remember, multiples are um, when you multiply a number, you get the multiples of that number. So for example, six, we get the multiples by taking six times one, six times two, six times three, six times four, and so on. Uh, those are the multiples of six. So when we're talking about common multiples, remember common means shared, um, and they can be two or more numbers that we find the common multiples for. So for example here, we've got the number four and the multiples of four are four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, and so on. They continue going on further. Uh, then we have six, we have six, 12, 18, 24, 30, and 36, and again, they continue on, but we only list the first few of them. Uh, then you can see I've circled the ones here that are uh, common to both 4 and 6. So both 12 and 24 are common multiples. There are more if I would have continued that out, but I don't need any more. The least common multiple then would be the smallest number of the common ones. So 12 would be the least common multiple between 4 and 6. So the least common multiple the LCM of 4 and 6 is the number 12. All right, so again, just like we had with greatest common factor, in least common multiple, we have two different methods. We could do the first method, which is just like what I just showed you on the last example. We're just going to list them out. So we go 9 times 1 is 9. Then the next one's going to be 18, 27, 36. So oh, my cursor doesn't want to move here. Sorry about that. Uh, 36, then I have 45, and last but not least, 54. Then 12, I do the same thing. I've got 12 times 1 is 12, 12 times 2 is 24, 12 times 3 is 36, 48, and 60. So now, do I have any common numbers? Absolutely. Look at right here, the one I goofed up on on the first one, and here. That's all they have in common, but that's all I need because we just want the smallest, the first common multiple. So 36 would be the LCM of 9 and 12. So if we wanted to do that for 8 and 6, let's go ahead and quickly try the first multiple, or the first method. So 6 would be 6, 12, 18, 24, 30, 36. That's as far as I'm going to go. We'll see if I can find one in there. Then for 8, I'm going to start 8 times 1. Then I have 16, 24, 30, oh, 32, and 46. Ooh, look at right here. Both of those are the same. So my LCM my least common multiple between 6 and 8 happens to be 24. Now, this works really well when we have small numbers or easy numbers to work with. 8 and 6 are pretty easy. 9 and 12 are pretty easy. But sometimes we have bigger numbers. Um, oh, let me back up here. Here's just our written out of how we do method 1. List the first few multiples of each number. Check for any common ones if there are, circle them. If no common multiples are found in the first step, then keep listing a little bit further. Sometimes you need to list a little bit further, and you'll find ones that are common. The smallest number that you have circled is the LCM. So with that, uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next uh, slide. Man, my computer, my little mouse is going crazy. Uh, so we have a second method to use when we have bigger numbers. Uh, and it's a lot like the second method that we used for greatest common factor. So I want you to pay attention here. We're going to start by doing factor trees to write out the, comp, the prime factorization of each number. So we've got 42, 6 times 7 is here. 7 is our prime. 6 we've got to continue on. So we get 2 times 3 times 7 for 42. And when we to find the prime factorization for 60, we get 2 times 2 times 3 times 5. So just like we did for greatest common factor. We're also going to circle whatever they have in common. 
So we've got twos in both of them. We also happen to have threes in both of them. So I'm going to circle. That was kind of an ugly circle, but it worked. Uh, I circle these threes as well. So what we're going to do is write the circled numbers once. So just like we did before, um, I've got a two. I'm going to write it here because I'm running out of room. That's my first circle. I have another circle of threes. So notice, even though my circle contains two twos, I just write what number it was that they have in common. They have a two in common and they have a three in common. And now here's where it gets different. If I was doing greatest common factor, this is all I would do and I would take two times three and tell you that six is their greatest common factor. But I want their greatest or their least common multiple, which means I'm going to do this step. But now I need to go back and pick up all these little numbers that were left behind and add them to my uh, product here. So I'm going to take a 2 and a 5 and a 7 and add them here. Now I'm going to multiply and figure out what this end number is. So 2 times 3 is 6 times 2 is 12 times 5 is 60 times 7 is 420 is my least common multiple which it would take a little while to get that if I was doing the first method. So you can see the least common multiple between these numbers is 420. So we pick those first two numbers or the ones that we had circled common in both of them and then we pick up all those little extra ones. So let's go ahead and try it. We've got 27. 27 we can break down into 3 and 9, right? 3 times 9 is 27. 3 happens to be a prime number, so I'm done on this side. But 9 is composite, so I've got to break it down again into 3 times 3. We know those are primes, so I'm done with that. I'm going to have 3 times 3 times 3. 45 I know is the product of 5 times 9. 5 is a prime number. 9 is not. So I have 3 times 3. These ones are prime. So now this prime factorization is 3 times 3 times 5. So now I need to go through and circle their common ones. They both have a 3. So I got one circle. Oh, they both have another 3. And then these ones don't match. So I write out what did I circle the first time? I circled 3. My second circle is again of threes. And then I have to go back and pick up these last little scraggly ones. We can't leave them behind. They're a little lonely sitting out there. So I'm going to add my three and my five in here. And when I do that, I need to multiply together. Three times three is nine times three is 27. What do I get when I have 27 times five? Well, let's figure it out. 27 times 5. 5 times 7 is 35. 5 times 2 is 10. Plus 3 is 13. So my least common multiple is 135, which, oh, I didn't hide it well enough. Here we have it. Our least common multiple is 135. Good job. How about we try it again? I want you to try it. Go ahead and pause it and try this, and we'll check it in a minute. So try it on your own. All right. Hopefully, you got uh, maybe a 9 times 2, which equals 2 times 3 times 3 for the prime factorization of 18. And then for 22, this one was pretty quick. 2 times 11, those are both prime factors. So I'm just having 2 times 11 as my prime factorization. I go through and I figure, do they have anything in common? Yep, I'm going to combine these 2's and just count them once. So I got a 2. And then I have to pick up these last 3 numbers. I've got a 3 times a 3 times an 11. And when I take 2 times 3 times 3 times 11, 2 times 3 is 6, 
6 times 3 is 18, 18 times 11, you should get 198 as your least common, whoops, least common multiple. So what happens when I have three numbers here? I'm still going to do the same thing. Uh, do the prime factorization, find the prime factorization for all three of these and write them out. I want you to do the, the factor trees on your own. When you do that, you should have gotten a 2 times a 2 times a 3. Then we've got a 3 times a 5 for 15. And I have a 2 times a 5 for a 10, right? So that's what you should have gotten after doing your factor trees. Now, when we have three, all we need to do is something needs to be common in at least two of them. It does not need to be in all three of them for it to count. So when we look at it, do I have any other twos? Yes, I do. So I'm going to count this as a circle. So I'm going to have a two times something. Do I have anything else common? Ooh, look at this. I'll change my color so you can see it. I've got a 3 here, and I have a 3 over here. Anything else in common? I hope you answered yes, because I have two 5s here as well. So I've got one, two, three circles, so I've got one, two, three numbers, and now do I have anything left out that I have not yet used? And my answer is yes, I have not quite used this two right here yet, so I need to add that down here as well. Now, should, uh, I just need to let you know if there happened to have been a two in this one as well, um, I would circle, that. it can be in all three of them, but it just needs to be in at least two of them. So if this would have been a two, it would have been included in this circle here. Uh, I don't know if that makes any sense or not to you, but it needs to be in at least two of the numbers, um, but can be in all three of them, and it would just count in the same circle. So let's go ahead and figure this out. Two times three is six. Six times five is 30. 30 times two is, dun da 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 60 is our least common multiple between 12, 15, and 10. Very good. Now I want you to try it once on your own. Uh, numbers 40 and 32, this is coming from number 18 out of what's going to be your homework tomorrow. So you'll have one already done tomorrow if you do uh, this in the back of your notes. So try and find out what is the least common multiple between 40 and 32 for tomorrow. All right, have a great day. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow.